According to the Cretan explorer of Aegean scripts, Minas Secretus, the first analog computer in the history of mankind was discovered by the Minoans. And this computer preceded the Antikythera mechanism by 1400 years and to this day is considered the first analog computer in history. And we're talking about a second millennium BC Minoan astronomical device. The Minoan Eclipse Calculator. Mind-blowing. Now, according to the researchers, the Minoan object found in 1898 in the Palacastro of Sicia predates the mechanism of Antikythera by 1400 years. And it's the first analog computer known in history. And it's a portable one. So, tonight we are going to dissect selected parts of a very interesting paper titled A Minoan Eclipse Calculator. And we'll leave you links below so you can read the paper yourself. Now, an observation by the British archaeologist Sir Arthur Evans in his book, The Palace of Minos at Gnosis, back in 1935, led a research team to the three figures included in the book of the Pilextro Plate. And that plate is right here. Now, according to Evans, these carvings were representations of the moon and the sun. And the first publication of this plate included figures. It was done by the archaeologist Stephanos Xanthuides in the difficult-to-find journal Archaeologici Ephemeris back in 1900. The article mentions that the findings were actually two plates which were discovered together in the same field, 150 meters northwest of the village of Palais Castro of the Siecia province of Crete in 1899. Today, these plates are dated by archaeologists as originating in the 15th century BC. Now, upon examination of the two plates, the team concluded that only one of them has astronomical significance, and it's the one you're looking at. This plate was probably used as a die for the production of possibly metallic copper, silver, or gold. And these copies or depictions would have been used to sell or to disseminate to the public. Now the symbols and figures carved on the surface of this plate, we will try to describe to the best of our ability. Now the issue of dating of this plate is still open. However, in the team's opinion, the most probable dating is that of M. Nilsson from the 16th century B.C. or of the intermediate one of the 15th century B.C. Now, the team acquired high-definition photographs of the findings provided at Heraklion Archaeological Museum after issuing a permission to study the plate. The plate could be studied at a magnification of about 5x. Now, by examining the magnified photographs of the plate, the team observed that there were various depressions, notches, and dots in numbers and ratios that indicated a relationship to astronomical phenomenon. And by studying the components of the die and correlating these with the astronomical phenomenon, the team was able to explain its intended use. Mind-blowing. The most obvious interpretation is that of an eclipse calculator, which could be produced by imprinting a copy of the die on a soft, soft solid, uh, malleable metal, or even a soft wood. Now, in order to test this interpretation, the team constructed a three-dimensional model of the ray-bearing disk in its original dimensions, which was about 8.5 centimeters across. 
The team was able to carefully measure the dots that appear on both the disk itself and on the triangular rays on its circumference, which had six dots on each of the rays themselves. Now, in the disk's circumference appear 25 triangular rays or teeth, each of the 20 of them has five tiny dots, while other four rays have three dots, and each one ray has no dots at all, just one dash, denoting probably a starting point, perhaps. The total number of these dots is 112, knowing that the Saros cycle includes 223 lunar months, 112 seems to be too close to half of that number to be mere coincidence. Now, until now, the earliest record of the Saros cycle is the Babylonian astronomers from 750 BC to 1 BC. The Saros is a period of 6,585.3 days, which is approximately 18 years and 11 days, during which the relationship of the sun, earth, and moon will return to the same configuration as the starting eclipse similar to the lunar standstill. Now, looking at the Piascro plate, the team found that by moving six nodes every 12 lunar months, then the triangle ray circle can cover one such Saros cycle. A different way of expressing this is that if 112 is divided by six, then you get the number 18.66. This is the lunar standstill the number of years in a sorrow cycle. Therefore, it seems logical that the nodes shift by six positions every 12 lunar months. Now, inside the disk, there are carved two circles. The outer one, which contains 58 small circular cavities, and the inner circle, which is a single depression that contains 59 carved short lines and is interpreted in four places by a cross. This is mind-blowing, because if you're picking it up, this is the same layout as Stonehenge. Now, hopefully that revelation is mind-blowing, but let's break it down even further. The two lines of the cross, or the diameter of the circle, bear dots in rows as follows. The vertical line bears 11 dots on its upper part and 10 dots on its lower part. The horizontal line bears two rows of dots, the upper row of its left-hand part having 10 dots and the right-hand part having seven. Now the lower row has 11 dots in its left-hand part and eight dots on its right-hand part. 11 plus eight equals 19. The horizontal diameter of the cross divides the disc into two semicircles, each of which have 28 dots. Now, it can also be observed that if metallic imprints on this die are produced, then in addition to the disc, there will be two pins, each six centimeters long, and a flexible tweezer-shaped object that probably served as a compass for drawing the circles. And also measuring the distances. Now, assuming that the discs and its carving served the stated purpose, then these objects, which correspond to horizontal forms to the right of the ray bearing disc on the die, can be understood as tools for its proper functioning. The two pins could be cut into. Three parts each, yielding six pins. Six pins are required for the proposed operation of the device. Now, after the team's numerical results, it appeared that the most probable use of the plate ray-bearing disc in combination with the pins and the pairs of compasses pertains to astronomy. See, these are the pins. There's a tweezer, a compass. And so it was almost like directions on how to use the device. Mind-blowing. Now, with the use of a pin placed at the center of a cross, like we're showing here, its solar shadow on the disk surface could lead to the determination of the following elements. The true solar time during daytime, 
if this device is used as a sundial, the geographical latitude of your position, the cardinal points on the horizon, the first day of each year's season, the length of the tropical year, and the daily change of the declination of the sun. The ray-bearing disc has 25 triangular teeth. If they are enumerated per half-hour interval and a pin is placed perpendicular to the central cavity, then the pin's solar shadow indicates the point of the disc's circumference that corresponds to the time of the observation. This is mind-blowing. So this is not only the first clock, it's the first eclipse calculator, compass, map-making device. In this way, this simple device could be used as a portable sundial of 12.5 hours. And its hour corresponds to approximately 58 minutes, which is very close to the modern hour. And here they break down all of the scenarios where you can use this as a sundial or a timekeeping device. Now, if the one pin and the pair of compasses are used, with the user marking every 14 or 15 days, which is half of a lunar month, the edge of the pin's solar shadow at the moment of true north, then the course of one year or analemma would form a figure similar to the digit eight. The shadow's angle at the equinoxes is at the two edges of the crosses at C. Let me, do I even have the right figure up here? Well, you get the picture. This is a literally a portable calculator which can not only determine what part of the year, month, and day you're on, but also the hour. And a portable calendar, calculator for predicting lunar eclipses, as we're looking at here. This device, albeit just a stone carving, records every eclipse that occurs per lunar month and year whenever the sun and the moon are in conjunction, which means either at full moon or at the new moon phase near the node of the lunar orbit. The inner circle is divided horizontally by the double row into two semicircles, the one with 29 carved dots, 15 on the left and 14 on the right, and the other with 30, 16 on the left and 14 on the right, with its, which is a total of 59 total dots in the inner circles. These two inner rings with the 29 and 30 dots lead to the conclusion that they correspond to two successive lunar orbits, apparent orbits since their average is the number of days, 29.5, in the lunar or synodic month. And they needed to eliminate the half day by putting 29 and 30. Now the exact value is 29.530588866 days, which is a difference of only 44.05 minutes per month. Now to use this die as an eclipse calculator, six pins are required, corresponding to the following positions. One for the position of the sun, one for the position of the moon, two for the nodes of the lunar orbit, and two on the dots of the crosses in order to follow that number of the lunar months and years that pass. And the paper proves that they verified the function of the device. The first step was to test the device to verify whether it can predict future eclipses with a reasonable accuracy and precision. So they actually used the de device to calculate the lunar and solar eclipses for the next few years. And 15 days after the full moon on January 4th, 2011, there's a new moon, and the sun's pin has passed and moved by two places towards the direction opposite the direction of the motion of the moon's pin. The nodes remained on the same dots. It was observed that the sun's pin is in the area of the triangle of the node. Therefore, since there is a new moon, 
a partial solar eclipse will take place on January 4th, 2011. Two lunar months later, on February 23rd, 2011, the moon will be in a full moon phase and the sun's pins will have been moved nine dots. While the nodes will have shifted one dot, on June 15th, 2011, 167 days or six lunar months after the first lunar eclipse, the position of the moon corresponds to the full moon phase after it moved clockwise by one short line per day in the inner circles, 29 and 30 days. The sun's pin has been moved in the opposite direction and is now on dot 28. The nodes have been moved clock clockwise by three positions during these months. And lo and behold, on the left-hand side of the figure, above the node's pin on dot three, the sun is within the opening of a triangle and the moon is full, a coincidence that denotes a total lunar eclipse. Now with this Minoan calculator, not only has it pr proven its efficacy, but it can further predict the total eclipse of December 10th, 2011. And on and on. The fact that one node is adjacent to the sun and the moon fully testifies to the reliability of this device. And the fact that now they have a small carving which they can use to correlate to Stonehenge, which was calculating the same exact things, is mind-boggling. Now, in order to avoid probable coincidence in the cases of previous predictions, they extended their testing to future eclipses up to the year 2028, which is one full lunar standstill. This device predicts, in addition to the lunar eclipses, the partial solar eclipse that will be visible from Greece in March of 2015. And it should be noted that in the case of a total eclipse, the positions of the nodes and the sun are within the same region of the same triangle. Now, as a conclusion, it, it can be said that the device generated by the die of the Palicastro can be used as a competent lunar and solar eclipse calculator even to this day. In a total number of 33 eclipses, only two were not predicted, giving a percentage of error of 6%, while 94% of the predictions were accurate in the course of one full lunar standstill. That that's mind-blowing. Now this device, or die, can be regarded as an integral part of the astronomical knowledge of the Minoans, as it is evidenced by the astronomical orientations of palaces and peak sanctuaries that have been determined by archaeoastronomical research in the field of Minoan archaeology. So our question is... The Minoan Eclipse Calculator, the first of its kind? Or is it a representation of something that was much older? And it is also interesting to note that this technology was lost for a period of time before it was regained in recent millennia. Mind-blowing. There's much to be learned about hidden archaeology, archaeology in plain sight that no one wants to talk about because it doesn't fit the narrative. But this device, thousands and thousands of years old, thousands of years before Christ, is clearly a computer with high accuracy, mimicking the layout of Stonehenge and many other megalithic structures. Hope you got something out of the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Leave a comment or a question below, and be safe. We love you. And that's a boom to the first computer. Mm -hmm.